Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Hollingsworth, and welcome to... This is a 14-part tutorial series centered around the ukulele. In every video, we'll be working our way through this, workbook number one, and playing along with the chord charts for every song. But we'll also be going in depth about how chords and notes work together, learning some beginning music theory, and soon we'll start to take a look at the stories behind the artists that we're playing. But before we can do all that, we've got to get the ukulele ready for lessons and learn our first three chords, what I call sticker chords. And once we know these, I'm going to show you how to attach them to a song. Let's begin with getting familiar with some basic things on the ukulele. On page three of the workbook, you'll find a diagram showing most of the notes on the ukulele. We won't worry about this much at first, but remember this as a useful reference for when we start getting more specific about individual notes. You'll also hear me refer to frets pretty often. These are the spaces in between the metal bars on the neck, or fretboard, and it's where you put your fingers. But at first, I'm not going to be talking about frets. I'm going to go over open strings. An open string is what we call our strings when we aren't pressing down any frets. Now, while every note has a letter name, it's especially important to memorize what notes we get with open strings, since that becomes the name of the string as well. The string here is the G string. This is C. This is E. And this is the A string. If you're trying to tune the ukulele, those are the notes that you want, and you can match the sound of C middle C on the piano. Now the ukulele is sort of unique because it uses something called re-entrant tuning, meaning that this is not the lowest note, like it would be on guitar or bass. The C string is the lowest note, followed by E, then G, then A. You can get ukuleles with a low G string, but I prefer these. You can do cool stuff like this. but we're getting ahead of ourselves. The first thing we're going to learn about is chords. A chord is three or more notes put together. For instance, first note, second note, third note, but when you play them all together, that makes a chord. There are more rules than just that, but that's the basic idea. And for our chords, we'll always be using all four strings. Now, it does matter what the notes are, just like it matters what words you use in a sentence. You can't just make up words and hope they make sense. Same thing with chords. To begin, we're going to go over three chord shapes. When starting out on ukulele or guitar, it's common to learn chords in this way. Learning what the individual notes are can come later. So, let's figure out where to put our fingers, and to do that, we're going to employ a useful tool to help us. Stickers. I use blue, red, and green printer label stickers this size. They're perfect to fit on the frets of any sized ukulele. I usually buy mine at Staples, but you could probably find them anywhere they sell office supplies. So, once you have these, it's time to apply them. First is the blue sticker. I put this one right here, underneath the A string, on the third fret. Then I put the red sticker on the second fret underneath the G string. And lastly, we need three green stickers. One goes on the second fret underneath the A string. One goes on the third fret underneath the E string. And one goes on the second fret underneath the C string. And that is the finished product. So now that we have this blue sticker, this red sticker, and these green stickers, let's go over what kind of chords this gives us. Does this diagram make sense? This is sort of what you see if you look straight down at your hands. See the blue dot with the three on it? Yes, that is the blue sticker. It's also on the third fret, but that's not why the three is there. What it means is that you're going to use your third finger. When you put your finger on the blue sticker and strum all the strings at once, you get a C major chord. 
You can put your other fingers down behind your ring finger. It will make a difference. Now, I should clarify, there are two basic types of chords that we will be using, major and minor. There are more types than that, but you don't need to worry about that now. Most popular songs only use major and minor. And when we write a chord like C major, we only write C. When we see the letter by itself, we assume it's major. Now let's do eight strums of the C chord together. Either bring your whole hand down across the strings like this, or use your thumb like this. Do what's comfortable for right now, as long as you're strumming all the strings. Ready? One, two, three, and. Very nice. I'm just going to assume that was no problem for you, so we can move on. Now that we've done our blue sticker, let's turn our attention to the red sticker. For this one, you're going to use your middle finger, put it on the second fret, and strum. This is how you play the A minor chord. And remember this, major chords are just a letter, but minor chords have a little M next to them. Some people write both letters lowercase, but I don't. It's not necessary. Now strum an A minor for eight beats with me. Ready? One, two, three, and. Alright, good. We're making good progress. So, now let's tackle that last sticker chord, the one with all the green stickers. This is the G major chord. Not that I want you to think of some chords as easy and some chords as hard, but let's be honest. C and A minor only need one finger. They're pretty easy. This looks a little harder, given how it uses three fingers. It's not that hard, though, and very natural feeling once you get used to it. Pay close attention to how I put my fingers on the strings. I put my first finger right here, my middle finger right behind it here, and my ring finger over to the side, right here. Now, as we're using three fingers, it's important to make sure that the notes can still ring out. Keep your fingers slightly curved, try not to let any finger rest on a string it's not supposed to, and apply enough pressure. This will stop you from having thuddy or dead strings and keep the chord nice and beautiful. With that being said, let's strum G major eight times. Ready? One, two, three, and. And now that we've done this, we're going to create a chord progression, which is just a series of chords. To do this, we're going to strum red A minor eight times, then blue C major eight times, and end with green G major eight times. And we're going to do this without stopping. One, two, three, and. Now let's try this. We're going to strum A minor and C for only four beats, but keep G at eight. This won't be too hard because A minor and C are easy, but G is honestly a little trickier, so we're getting to play that one for twice as long. And remember, always think one step ahead. You've got plenty of time to switch to the next chord, just be prepared to do it. Let's try this together. One, two, three, four. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a chord progression. It doesn't have to be a lot of chords, and it doesn't have to be fast. It just has to be a sequence of chords. And this forms the backbone of most of the music that we listen to. So let's take this one step further and loop this chord progression, playing it twice through. Ready? One, two, three, four. One.
now for one final step. I'm going to show you what I mean by attaching this to a song, and we'll do that in the next video. Thank you.